Now, we, actually, we've got uh, uh, Bob Such standing by in, uh, in his seat of Fisher, but we're going to first of all take a look at the figures in that seat because uh, we've got 32.2% of that vote counted. Bob Such has held this seat since 1989. He's an independent on a margin of 16%. How's it looking? Well, as, as votes have come in over the night, it's swung away from uh, the independent Bob Such and now the booths it's swung towards Bob Such. What we have at the moment is Bob Such with 41% of the votes, Christopher Moriarty 29% and ALP 19%. Now, it needs a preferences. Independent Bob Such is leading. There's been a very small swing of 0.4% to the Liberal Party. And as there's 32% of the votes counted, uh, and there's some two of Bob Such's very strong booths to come in, I would say he'd be feeling comfortable. Well, Bob Such, uh, good result for you, then? Uh, yes, I'm very um, thankful for the people who supported me, because we run on a shoestring, and... Uh, uh, shoe leather and basically that's it. So I don't have the big resources of a major party and uh, in fact if uh, people knew how little I spent they'd probably laugh because they ca couldn't believe you could win an election on that amount. Now you've been in Parliament now since 1989 so how do you read this election and where did Labor go wrong and have the Liberals done a, a really good job? Well I think Labor made a, a key mistake in not focusing on the economy um, that was their big point. They didn't use their paid advertisements to highlight that. They got obsessed with things like a nuclear waste dump and rave parties, trying to damage the leader of the opposition. And when they should have been out extolling the economic achievement of the last four years. Now, we all know that economic achievement's a result of international factors and federal factors, but in politics you use that for every cent it's worth. So they made a big mistake there. I thought they made a mistake in not running Mike Rand in Nord. Uh, we'll see whether Nord swings to Liberal. But if I was the Labor strategist, I would have run Mike Rand there because you could put someone in Ramsey and, and be almost guaranteed they'll win for Labor. But the, the Libs, I think, made a mistake in recycling old candidates in two seats, um, Newland and Hartley, and that's no reflection on those individuals, but I think that was a tactical error. I know why they did it. They wanted to get more women into Parliament in the case of... Uh, Newland, but I think that was an error. But look, Isabel Redmond came in as a clean skin, no frills, no spin, and I think that's appealed. And also the Chanteloy saga, and I pass no judgment, I don't know what went on, but I think amongst female voters, I think that did labour a lot of damage. Now, you had a portfolio in the education area at one stage. What do you think's gone wrong with Jane Lomax Smith then? Well, What's happened to our state education system really concerns me in that it's been withering on the vine. It's not just the last four years, it's been happening for a long time. And unless uh, we give some local autonomy to uh, principals and governing councils in state schools, it'll continue to wither because every decision of any significance has to be approved by people in Flinders Street and that is just not the way to run a school this, in this day and age. And I was pleased the Liberals at least picked up on that strategy but I've been jumping up and down about that for ages. Now, you were a Liberal and then you've become an Independent and at one stage you were working with the Government as Speaker uh, effectively in some sort of uh, arrangement with them. If there was a hung Parliament, what would you do if you were um, having to make a decision now? Well, I'd go back to the people of Fisher <clears throat> and I've told them that, that if it's uh, a hung Parliament or close to it, I'll go back and ask them for their considered view. I write to them, so it's not open to people manipulating it easily. We, we keep a close eye on that, and I've done a lot of research in my earlier days. We're, I'd ask them not only which party, but I'd look at the two-party preferred... Or the, the preference, rather, the, the second preference uh, of, uh, that was cast today. Well, just very briefly, if uh, Labor <laughs> needed you, would you uh, be interested in the education portfolio? Well, look, I, we'll wait to see what happens, but um, I refuse to meet either of the major parties before the election because I don't think it's appropriate, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, I'm more interested in the future of the state rather than myself because I've been there a long time and I, I'm very concerned about where South Australia is heading and, and I want to see South Australia uh, lead not only the nation but lead, lead the world. Bob Such, thank you very much thank for your you. time. OK, time to take another look uh, across the state and try and make some sense of these figures that are shifting uh, across different electorates.
some big swings in some some uh, marginal Labor seats that had been expected to fall that appear at this stage uh, Labor is holding its ground. But if we look at, uh, at the state vote and with uh, something like 42.6% of the vote counted, uh, there is a swing in two party preferred terms of 7.4% uh, to the Liberals. Now, it depends how, that's, how that swing translates in individual seats. But on paper, that swing would say, would suggest that we're going to have a hung parliament. Uh, we're going to have to wait to see how that translates. Now, if we have a look at the scoreboard, the, which uh, shows seats that have changed hands, we're saying that Labor has won 24 seats. Now, if that's correct, that is enough for Labor to retain government in its own right. And uh, the computer is saying at this stage that uh, Labor has lost three seats. The Liberals, uh, we're saying, have held 17 seats for sure and that they've gained three seats. We're saying now that there are only three seats in doubt. Uh, now, Dean, if we look at the primary uh, count, what does that tell us in terms of the primary swing? Well, it tells us a lot. First of all, it tells us that there's, there's a range of differences between them, but I'll talk about that with individual electorates. What it shows is a swing of 6.9% away from the Labor Party. Now, that was the figure which, if it was uniform, would have provided the five seats necessary for a hung parliament to be formed, but it is simply not uniform. Similarly, the Liberal Party has a 7% swing in its favour, Again, if that had been uniform in those marginal seats, it would be a hung parliament result, but it's not uniform. The Greens have increased their, uh, their vote to about 8.2%. Family First have lost support. The National Party, despite having two candidates this time, has dropped in its support. And others are 6.1%. Uh, it is important to realise that the 7% swing to the Liberal Party there would have, if it was uniform across those marginal seats, have produced a hung parliament. It would have meant the loss of five seats at least for the Labor Party. But it's not uniform. In some of those marginal seats, the swing's to Labor. Looking at the chamber, these are the seats actually won. Labor has 24. Now, that 24 means an absolutely bare majority. The Liberal Party, 17, and there are three independents. 44% of the vote counted, so we're getting up near to the point where it's going to be pretty final soon. Turning now to the prediction. This is the computer's prediction for the final result. Labor to pick one up, one more seat to 25. The Liberal Party, 19, and three independents in the House. OK, we might um, see what sense do you make of that, because according to our computer prediction, you're actually back. Well... <coughs> we know there's plenty of room for caution. Well, look, there but is. But as I say, the computer's uh, record uh, over the years I, and I, over many elections has been pretty well, good. Well, I was... I had it. It's all right. Sorry. Yep. Look, Sorry, I, I, I'm not yet ready, Kerry. I mean, I, uh, I note the computer's calling us uh, a win in Mawson. <laughs> I haven't had that come through from my people yet. They're very confident. Um, and light the same way. I haven't had the, the confirmation from my people. But I'm still anxiously cautious. Um... Or cautiously we'll anxious. Cautiously anxious, or... <laughs> um, but, I, as I said, yeah, I Look, feel... Look, I'm, I'm certainly not pushing, because this, is, uh, this has been quite, uh, quite a fascinating little process, watching these jumps around Well, I guess the, the hard seats. thing for people like Rob Lucas and I is, is that... And I guess Rob was like me. I mean, we're in the... You know, we're in the bunker throughout a campaign, so we get polling numbers thrown in front of us for four or five weeks, probably for, you know, 12 months... And you just hear so many statistics, so many predictions, so many variations. Uh, you know, it is just such a draining process. And until you actually see the final numbers locked in, uh, I'm not really in a position to yeah. call it. Rob? Well, look, I think it's looking uh, increasingly difficult for us to get the numbers to form government. Uh, I'm obviously not uh, uh, anywhere in the position to concede uh, uh, that it's impossible, but it's increasingly difficult. Uh, those... Uh, Seats that we've been looking at, uh, less than 5% seats, like uh, Light in particular, uh, and potentially Mawson. Um, if we can't win those sort of seats, well, then we do need a few wild cards. And at this stage, it might, might be that the only wild card is a seat like Adelaide. Yeah. Um, uh, we're not aware of any other wild card that's coming through from the uh, Electoral Commission computer. So it's looking increasingly difficult for us to get the numbers. Uh, a big increase in seats, as I said... Our people are more and more confident about Frome and Chafee, which would be two new seats or two more seats to come into our party room, which would be good to uh, outstanding candidates in those particular seats to come into our party room. 
Um, obviously, Mount Gambier is line ball uh, with the independent down mm. there. So um, that's obviously one we'll be watching closely.